So it's not surprising with all the big Brexit news that's been going on recently that some things would slip under the radar. However, um, kudos to the Liverpool Echo for covering this because I think this is the story that really sets the pace and really shows what you've done. You've given this country over to the most right-wing government in our history. Thatcherism 2.0 is back on the menu. Give Boris Johnson a handbag. Recall, um, you may remember from Spitting Image. Um, oh, I can't remember what his name was now. Um, oh, he was Blonde Man. You know, high above, high above Westminster, one man is fighting for the lead of the Tory membership. Blonde Man! <laughs> well, we have a new Blonde Man. You could call these the new adventures of Blonde Man. I, I, somebody please do that. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> oh. But, so, end to the story then. A um, bit of levity into, well, this is what you've let us in for, guys. So, Tories abandoned pledge to end austerity with more brutal cuts on the way. The Chancellor's ordered departments to identify savage cuts to budgets despite pre-election promises. Tories not keeping their promises? Shock horror. So, the government has been accused of breaking its promise to end years of brutal austerity after, chance, after the Chancellor ordered ministers to identify yet more savage cuts. Sadid Javid promised before the general election that no government departments would be forced to reduce their budgets in 2020. The pledge came after years of uh, of swinging of of, 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 stick, of st uh, sw stinging cuts to areas like the NHS, police, and local government. But as the Mirror reports, he has now written to the cabinet ministers asking them to draw up cuts of five percent of their spending plans. They've been told to go through their budgets line by line and readily to justify any spending plans and projects they want to keep. In the note, Mr Javid wrote, We have been elected with a clear and fiscal mandate to keep control of day-to-day -day spending. This means there will be a need to be savings made across the government to free up money to invest in our priorities. But Mr Javid's... Uh, no, spending round speech just three months before the election the Chancellor declared that he had turned the page on austerity Mr Javid said no department will be cut next year every single department has had its budget for day-to-day -day spending increased in the in least in line with inflation that's what I mean by the end of austerity Labour's shadow Chancellor John McDonnell said we were promised by Johnson and Javid that they would end austerity and end the cuts to public services and that they were over. They have clearly aren't there's clearly isn't any evidence of this. Another Johnson lie has been exposed. The news will cause major concern at Liverpool Council, which has experienced deeper austerity cuts than any other city or uh, another any other city council over the past ten years. And it's not just Liverpool City; it's my own council as well. Barnsley Council has had its budget cut by forty percent, and now you're asking them to cut it even more. Soon, Barnsley Council will have its operating budget cut by over 50% and it's not just um, in areas like Barnsley in Wakefield where the new Tory guy came in promising um, to end austerity and all these budget cuts how is he going to explain that to his voters I, I guarantee you it's not going to go down well so in the new analysis from the local government association it is predicted that a reallocation of council funding could see Liverpool hit hard again, with another £26 million wiped off from 2021 onwards. Oh, and that's it. But yeah, um... Christ and a bike, yeah. Um, I, I told you, from the very moment, don't believe a single word... Johnson says um, and yet many of you 
um, believed it and voted for it. Don't give these guys a blank check for what they want. If you want Brexit, by all means, fine. But for God's sakes, don't put the Tories in charge. At least vote for someone sensible <laughs> like the Brexit party. At least we, we could have had some fun um, for at least the next couple of years. But here we are now. Um, you get what you voted for. If you voted for Johnson and his government and you believed them when they said that these cuts wouldn't come, then I urge you, write to your MP and said, you promised you would end austerity. Um, we have to start massively resisting. We have to start massive letter writing campaigns to Boris Johnson, Shannon David. If you are, if your MP is a Tory MP, write to them saying, you promised this, I will not vote for you at the next election because of this, then you will scare them. You will scare the pants off them if you start doing that. So, please, do, do something. Don't sit there and do nothing. I live in a, a, a Labour seat with Dan Jarvis. Um, I've already written to him. Um, I haven't had a response yet, but he normally does reply. Um... So I, who knows uh, if, we, if we get a response, I will I will read it out. But I basically said, look, um, you need to fight against cuts. He's already uh, said, I think on was it Facebook or Twitter? I can't remember one of his accounts that he was uh, standing up against this. Um, yeah, not surprising. That's what the Tories do. They cut and cut and cut until they just go. Well, we'll just have to privatize it. And, you know, bang, went that promise of sending all that money to the NHS. We are, what, almost a week now um, since, quote, Brexit Day. Um, still no sign of all that money uh, being sent to the NHS. Hmm. 